Hi guys, in this episode of Thylobites, we're going to take a really fast look at thylacine habitat. So what is thylacine habitat? Well, let's start by having a look at what isn't thylacine habitat. Classical rainforest. No prey, no predators. No grass for the prey to actually feed upon means that you're not going to get a lot of predators in there looking for them. Potentially, they might uh, come in to actually transit from one area to, to another, but it's not going to be a place where they frequent. So what is thylacine habitat? What's it look like? Here we have a eucalypt forest, plenty of grass for the prey species to actually feed upon. Therefore, there's gonna be a lot of them. Predators come in to actually take them, some trees to hide in, to get cover for. This is classic thylacine territory. Marsupial lawn out here for wallabies, paddy melons to graze on. Out they come and the predators, the predators like thylacines hide in this area around here. They get close to the prey and then pounce. So this would be a great area for thylacines to actually operate in. Fantastic picturesque part of Tasmania. Here you have potential den sites, marsupial lawn for the wallabies and the paddy melons to graze upon. You've got water for them to have. You've got uh, trees and cover in the area in the background here for the thylacines to, to hide in. So this is another great place. A lot of uh, bounties taken in this particular area. Very picturesque and beautiful place in Tasmania. So this map here shows where all of the bounties were paid from the late 1800s up until 1932. So the bigger the dot, the more thylacines are actually taken in that area. The next map we have here is the actual vegetation map of Tasmania, 1965. These Both of these maps are taken out of the 1980 World Wildlife Federation report uh, by uh, uh, Steve Smith, so one of the, uh, the renowned pieces of work and investigations on a scientific basis about whether thylacine was extant or not. So here you can see that just by the key, the slurophyll forests, right, the dots are the predominant areas where we have thylacine bounties being taken. Then after that, you have cleared land, the X's, so where people have come in and cleared it, maybe farmland. Then we have coastal heath, right, is number three. And number four is this sedge land area. So there's a few areas around here where there's some sort of sedge land activity. So basically, slurophyll forest number one, followed by cleared land. So our investigations really need to focus on that, those particular habitats. And here we have, this is the good rated sightings on the Smith system post 1936 to 1980, 104 sightings. So we then have to correlate those sightings with this kind of habitat. And you can see that you know, there's a number up here that we think are, are quite close to the coastal heath, the cleared land um, in the northwest and northeast. So you think that those sightings are probably pretty good. Some of the ones in in the in the deep dark uh, south here, uh, sedge lands are possible. But then we have a few others that are, are are in here in the rainforest type of area. You probably think that they're actually unlikely unless the animal was actually transiting through the area at the time during the sighting. Again, we have a look at that, and you can see in terms of you know this area down here, no bounties taken. Maybe you could argue the fact that because there were no bounties there, that there's actually a remnant population. Um, but I guess that's a uh, uh, another discussion. These sightings here on the coast, again, you know, down here, no bounties ever taken. Not a lot of, uh, of people actually accessing that area as well, so that needs to be taken into account. So what does the Slurophyll Forest actually look like, this quintessential thylacine territory? Well, here it is. So this is the kind of area where you can see that there's a bit of room to move. There's uh, areas for the prey species to come in and graze, to hide, to sleep beside trees, and there's also plenty of room for predators to come in. So this kind of area bordering on open plains is the area where we should be investigating for potential thylacine activity.